Have you ever asked yourself what your dog or a cat should be eating? Is it this? Is this what they should be eating? Little pellets of food. Food pellets. Most of my life I haven't really thought too much about what we feed our pets. Yeah. I just always assumed you go to the pet store, you get the pet food. Feed your pets. As with everything though, I've come to realize that's not how you do it. Because when you go to the grocery store and you buy human food, they don't really sell you human food either. I mean, with pet foods, you look for the cheapest, what's on sale, yep. what can I get? So should cats be eating like wild lions and their relatives? I think they're related in some way, right? Like lions, bobcats, things like that. No, they shouldn't be eating one another. It sounded like you said, should they be eating lions? No. <laughs> Similar Just in domesticated way. versus wild. Should dogs be eating like wild dogs and wolves and coyotes? Again, it sounds like they should be if you ask that question. I think that's a good place to start for sure. So what do these things eat? The majority of their diet is meat. By majority, if you mean 100%, then yeah. So Unless they're starving or something, right? Yeah, And I imagine guess. they would eat like grass and nonsense. They'll probably eat other weird stuff, yeah. but mostly meat. Here's one thing I bet you that none of these animals do eat in nature. A bowl of cooked oatmeal. Or carb heavy diets anyway. Pea protein isolate. And I'm here today with Yogi Joe and Bodhi, the happy healthy vegan cats. And I thought I would whip up a batch of their favorite vegan food. So why are you feeding your pet oatmeal? Probably because you didn't know any better. That's why we were feeding our pets oatmeal too. It was convenient. It was yeah, cheap. That's big for sure. So what is in normal pet food? And this is actually like not normal. This is like, you know. A brand we thought was we were doing better. Good pet food, grain free yeah. pet food, which is better, but it's not great still. So it is, this is pretty good ingredients. Salmon, chicken, meal, pea protein, tapioca, potato protein. And then it just like gets into like a bunch of weird stuff, right? It wouldn't be that big of a problem if there wasn't a canine and feline obesity epidemic. Right. You guys heard of that? I don't know the exact numbers, maybe I'll overlay them on the screen, but a lot of dogs and cats are obese and they have diabetes too. So the change we recently made about the past four months is we transitioned our cat and dog, Julius and Miley, to raw food. So it's basically just the animal in whole. There's like bone chunks, there's the gland, so like the liver, the heart, the kidneys, as well as the muscle meat of the animal. Yeah, they take an entire animal and just blend it into food for the pets, basically. And honestly, they took to it like fish to water. There wasn't any transition period or any really issues with their like bowel movements or anything. They ate it up immediately and they really enjoyed it. Okay, so let's go into some pros and cons of doing the raw feeding. A lot of you guys have asked us about this, but we're like kind of rookies. We've only been doing it for four months. So do your research on this for sure. But I think one thing that is for sure is you don't want to just be like buying ground beef from the store and feeding them. It has to be nutritionally complete. Right. Uh, we just found out actually recently cats can't produce endogenous taurine. And so they need a certain amount of taurine that is usually up to standard in raw food that you'll buy, which may not exist if you were just doing ground beef at home on your own. Pros and cons. The biggest pro is of course, it's a million times better for the, your pets. So healthier, better bowel movements. Okay, so that's a big one. For Julius, he's very particular, he's our dog. He will like prance around for like 20 minutes sometimes before doing the raw feeding and he just wouldn't ever find a place to poop. And it was really annoying and he would go multiple times per day, like yeah. twice. At sometimes now, three. And it'd be like relatively voluminous. We're getting really in depth with this now, but I want to say six ounces, half of a Coke can full. That was really specific. But now he's basically like clockwork. He goes to the bathroom in the morning or if he's in a new area where he gets like new smells, he'll go to the bathroom just immediately. Yeah. But every morning just squeezes out like a little bit, a little like maybe like a five hour energy worth. Essentially the poop is a lot more compact. It's harder in consistency. Very hard. It's like rabbit poop all smashed together. Like we can digest carbs a little bit. Dogs, like they've never eaten plants in their existence on earth. Mm -hmm. So why start now? Another pro is that Miley is not as obsessed with her food. She's still like a little, like she'll bother us and stuff. Not as dependent, yeah. But we used to just leave her food out and now we feed her twice a day. And personally, from what we've seen, Miley has like some eye issues. Mm. Those have cleared up. She's a lot more active and she, she doesn't want to just hide in the basement all the time. She hangs out, she plays. She's like turned into her younger self again. Big time. That's actually the reason we started doing this because we ha she had to have surgery Yeah. to like relieve her congestion. She was sneezing up a bunch of boogies. Yeah, and then Julius is also, he's put on some weight. He's definitely like become a healthier weight. 
He's a lot more active. He's probably gained like four pounds. Yeah. At least. But he definitely needed it and he's a lot more active like we said. And there's probably some placebo effect too because obviously we're going to all these lengths to feed them raw food. So of course we're going to be like, oh man, Miley's back to her old self. I think that's most of the pros. Cons. There's definitely some cons. Yeah. Nothing health wise or nothing with the pets at all. Right. Mostly just time consumption the whole logistics of feeding them raw food like traveling the first thing is you have to ha basically like you're cooking for yourself like you have to defrost the stuff what we do is like weekly we defrost their week's worth of food keep it in the fridge just scoop it out yeah it's not that time consuming it's five to seven minutes weekly the big con though is cost and that is gonna be definitely prohibitive to some people. I broke down the cost of different options. So what we do is we use Answers Raw Food. It's just mm -hmm. like ground up almost like hamburger meat. That is a, one of the better cost effective ways you're actually going to a store buying raw meat. But they do make like freeze dried stuff that you can basically use in place of the kibble, like the dried food you would have been using. And that is like just crazy expensive. Pro to that is that it outweighs the con of traveling. So yeah. if you are traveling once in a while, or you take your dog or your cat, then having the freeze dried food and just rehydrating it with some water is a lot easier than packing a cold package for your raw food. Yeah, that's what we do when we travel. Standard pet food off the shelf at Walmart, Purina brand. For 100 calories of dog food, it's seven cents. The cheapest raw food you can get, we started with this and then we looked up reviews and they had like a bunch of recalls and like dogs dying Just a little stuff. shifty. Look into it. Um, Blue Ridge it's called, that is 20 cents for 100 calories. So okay. that's like almost as cheap as- That's doable. Yeah, for sure. The stuff we use, Answers brand, which is like a reputable, good, I feel like they care about your dog. Uh, that's 60 cents for 100 calories. Still very doable. It is, but it's 10 times more expensive than the dry food. The freeze dry stuff, like we were talking about for travel, that is $1.40 for 100 calories. Which is why we don't, that's not the preferred route. No. It's the most convenient. So like if you are a billionaire on the go CEO, that's probably what you should go with. Essentially, like we have 30 pounds of animals under our watch. Like Julius is about 20, Miley's like nine-ish. Yeah, pushing 10. And it costs us $100 a month to feed them. Right. Whereas before it probably cost us like 20, 30. But again, that is the that is what we took on when we adopted these pets. Yeah. I don't like being like a preachy pet owner. Like do what you want to do with your pets. No, I I, I feel very strongly about this now. Okay. Especially like if you have kids, dogs and cats can get set aside, but like they're essentially your kids, right? Like would yeah. you feed your I mean some parents feed their kids though, I guess like McDonald's all the time. I think most of it is just out of not knowing better. We didn't know better, that's true. We also We've like upgraded her, Miley's litter. So we're like making steps, but for a really long time, we we're just going cheap route, whatever we could find in yeah. bulk. Spending a bunch of money on your dog when you can't afford good quality food for yourself, is not really a priority. Right, but I always say to those people, don't get a dog. It's yeah. always what I've said. I don't know, it's tough. Transitioning your pets from dry food to raw food, mm -hmm. how do you do it? Most places will tell you to just do it kind of slowly over time, yeah. right? Like over the course of a month. What I was surprised at was like Miley is like classically addicted to the dry food. Yeah. And she's very picky. Like we get her treats all the time. So we picky. just want to spend money on her. Like let us spend money on you, Miley. And we give her the treats and she's just like, no, I want my food. I want my normal food. Yeah. Never ate a treat in her entire life. We tried those greeny things where you put the pill inside of it. She's just like, no chance. Yeah. So we just have to shove pills down her throat. <laughs> we practiced one day. We just cut up like some chicken hearts and she chewed them down like nothing. Like she's been doing it for years. Yeah, I was a taken aback. I was like so impressed. I was so proud as a mama. Or any raw food we put on a plate for her, she's gonna gobble down. Like she took to it a lot better, I would even say, than Julius did. I mean, Julius immediately ate it all. Yeah, but still he was a little like, what is, this is very different than yeah. my normal food. So what we did was we were doing like the classic, just high carb food, just whatever is cheap, whatever we bought. Then we were like, you know what? Let's make a concerted effort. Let's go grain free. So we went grain free. The crave is what you just saw. Yeah. That's grain free. 40% high in protein. I'm like, whoa, 40%. That's a lot. That's great. Then we were like, is this even that good? We shop at Whole Foods. We should get our pets food from Whole Foods. The refrigerated. Refrigerated. Section. It's refrigerated. That generally means it's better. So we were doing that. 
um, for a little bit. And the fresh pet is like as expensive as raw food. It's super expensive. Yeah. So for after doing that, probably for like just a couple weeks, we were like, why don't we just do raw? Like it makes no sense. Why are we doing this slow transition? And then we we were doing like the half and half with Julia's, right? We were mm -hmm. doing half refrigerated food, half raw. I, I felt like that was pointless at the end of the day. Yeah. Because he took to the raw really well. So I think going back differently, what I would do is just cut everything out that we did and go straight to raw. I think Miley, we did wet food. I think that was kind of good. She might've needed that. Yeah, Miley was dry to wet to raw. Do you think pets do need to transition? So I don't all know. the bags say it. We're right. not veterinarians. I don't know anything about pets, like what they need. I would imagine, yeah, there's just like, same with humans. When you drastically change your diet, you there's like just it. digestive discomfort and stuff. I guess one other thing. So like we have 30 pounds of pets in the house. Where did that you say that? I'm just thinking if you have a hundred pound dog or something, yeah. that might get real costly, you know? Like that's almost $300 a month probably. That could be tough. I don't, I don't know. Would I do that? I probably would, I guess. We would. It's definitely tough. It gets pricey for sure. Four months into being elitist raw feeding pet owners, would we do it again? Would we do it all over? Of course we would. Pretty easy decision. I would say we would definitely do it again because it's really helping Miley. And I think it just is more in line with like our beliefs and stuff. Feed ourselves good foods. Why would we feed our pets yeah. gross like potatoes and stuff that they would never eat naturally? So I think this is something for you to consider as a pet parent pet owner hopefully you took something away and um if your if your pet is definitely having health issues i think this is a for sure a potential route to go to help with that as opposed to like you know injections or surgeries because that's also very very costly so you can omit that by feeding them raw but we're not veterinarians no no, no, no. But they know that. Like, they know yeah. I don't have a vet degree hanging up. But that's it, guys. What do you think about this? Comment below. Do you think it's insane to care this much about your pets? Or are you one of those pet owners who always comments on our videos that we should be like buckling Julius up in a seatbelt? Which one are you?